Hi, I'm Rich Breckner with Inside HPC, and I'm here in Orlando, Florida at the LUG 2011 conference. My guest today is Brent Gorda. Brent is CEO of OAM Cloud. Welcome, Brent. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Well, Brent, you have a company that started up just very recently. Can you tell us more about OAM Cloud? OAM Cloud is a company that's focused on high-performance file systems. We're a distributed company with employees around the world, and our main focus is the Lustre file system. We are, to my knowledge, the only vendor-neutral supplier of Luster today. So as a supporting uh, company of, of Lustra, I mean, you're supplying what the uh, services and uh, kind of being the caretaker of the code? Is that what you guys do? There's, there's three offerings. There's support for sites that have a big installation. They need to call somebody when there's an issue. There's development services, engineering to add features to and care for the code. And then there's professional services. There's training, there's benchmarking, there's helping sites select hardware, for example. As a neutral vendor, we can go into sites and help them architect solutions and tell them which might be best for their particular needs, and then they can go independently acquire the hardware. And the hopes is that we will show up again on the back end as the support outfit for that. So maybe we should talk a little bit about the genesis of why WAM Cloud came to be. I mean, um, Oracle acquired Sun, which owned Lustra, right? And they basically said, we're not going to support Lustra except on our equipment. That created kind of a void, didn't it? Is that where you guys sprouted? Absolutely. Lustra had always been hardware platform neutral. And so to see it close down, for lack of a better phrase, was hard both on the community and the people at Oracle who were doing the work. Um, I had taken over the funding of Lustre from Bill Boas for the Trilabs, and so I had a pretty deep interest in seeing the Lustre technology remain available, widely available, platform independent for the community. And so WAM Cloud was formed about a year ago as we listened to the presentations at LUG in Aptos, California. And the last year has been a bit of a blur, but we've, um, we've seemingly a, a gotten to really good places to where we're at right now. So uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about being an entrepreneur in HPC. Uh, we did an interview with Justin Ratner, the CTO of Intel recently, and he described it as a very unhealthy place for startups. The HPC market, it, it just it weeds them out and they don't seem to have much chance of surviving. So you're bucking that trend here. What are the challenges for you as a startup in the HPC community? Well, so bucking the trend by being only nine months old is maybe a little <laughs> premature, right? Yeah. We're, we're doing our best. The problem, I think, with startups in HPC is that it's a very low margin business, and the people you're trying to sell to have a huge amount of momentum and not a lot of money. So every bet they make potentially breaks their bank. So they only make safe bets, and it's only the very large sites that have any sort of discretional funds that they can take a chance on new technology. And so for the entrepreneurs trying to break into HPC, extremely long sales process. You have to convince people that your technology is worthy. Once you've done that, you have to convince them that it will scale up. Scale up in these days, you know, like a blue jean machine can be rather significant. Right, so you have to land a partner that's willing to take that huge risk with you, and then there'll be a trickle-down effect where the other sites will say, okay, it's probably safe for us to jump in and try this out. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not what's going on with WAM Cloud and Lustre, of course, right? Lustre's a proven technology. It's used in 70% of the top 100 or the top 500. We kind of lose resolution past that to know who's using it, who's not using it. But it's the leading file system in HPC, so there is a market out there right now. So you guys are relatively large for a startup. What's 40 employees, is that? We're 37 full-time and a handful of contractors, so we're a little over 40, yeah. And I understand you're a very distributed organization. What kind of challenges does that present for you as a CEO? Uh, distributed is a bit of an understatement. We've got probably 10 time zones. We've got an office in Beijing. Um, we're opening an office in Boulder. We've got an office in Bristol, UK. Um, we don't have more than maybe five people in any geographic area where if you count people who could drive together and have a meeting, 
there's two places that have maybe five people and the rest are onesie twosies everywhere including out in the middle of nowhere in China towns that I would not find on a map so the challenges of course are communication and keeping everybody on the flight path that's necessary to succeed at what we're doing we make extremely heavy use of new technologies such as Skype and text messaging right I look like a 12 year old kid with the amount of text messaging I do and it doesn't matter if the person's across the room or around the globe we're extremely efficient at communications which is really an interesting thing to see I came from Livermore where tools like Skype are not allowed and so it's the old-fashioned pick up the phone and hope somebody's there with these new tools you can tell not only when someone's online but when they're available to be um, Skyped talked to and so that's hugely valuable to us so you got this uh, 40 ish people right have they ever been in the same room to my knowledge no <laughs> and of course the other interesting fact is that I've not actually met all 40 of the people that work for me I have done every single hire some of them have been done over Skype with a face-to-face -face video feed some of them have been done over Skype with simply typing and it's been an interesting journey that way. So Brent, I've heard a lot about um, Wham Cloud this week. You guys had, I'm guessing, half dozen or more pres nine presentations. Uh, um, at the same time, we've had these three Lustra communities kind of come together. How does that affect the outlook for Lustra and and for Wham Cloud? So I think the outlook for Lustra itself is really strong. What you've seen over the last year is multiple groups springing up and giving Lustre a big hug, right? Everybody wants to see the technology move forward. There was a bit of, of uncertainty in the fact that there were multiple groups and it wasn't sure that they were all getting along. The announcement yesterday that the groups are effectively one, two, because one in Europe and one in, in North America is huge for the community to be able to move forward. All along there's been this fear of somebody forking the code. Right, that's completely off the table at this point. Everybody agrees that in a small community you can't fracture it. Nobody's talking about forking the code at this point. So it's really, really strong for Lustre's future. So there was a recent uh, Analyst Crossfire uh, video that I produced with Addison Snell, and he did this question about uh, Lustra. Okay, but if it was a stock, would you buy, sell, or hold? What would your answer be there, Brent? Luster's a very strong buy. Luster has a really bright future. 